Hey, hey, what's up, YouTube? Welcome to Six Days. I am Bob Six, and today I am reacting to Lil Peep, the Montreality interview. A lot of people have been asked for it, said it's good, and I need to react to it. If you're new to the channel, it's what I do. I do 100% genuine reactions. I don't overreact. I don't say I don't that I like stuff that I don't. If it's good, it's good, and if it sucks, it sucks. And I'm going to tell you, when you see me react to a song, that's the first time I have seen and or heard it. I don't listen to it in advance. I don't read up on it. I don't do anything in advance. So you get a genuine reaction. <clears throat> that sounds like something you're into. I'd appreciate it if you would subscribe and... Click that bell so you know every time I release new content. So let's jump on into this and see how this interview goes. Um, I think I think the planet is very sad. Yes, of course. I definitely think the planet is very sad. And I think a lot of people are also very ungrateful, which is a, another big problem. Well, that's why I got the crybaby tat on my face. I got a humongous tattoo that says crybaby and shit. To keep me grateful and remind me not to be a crybaby, so I see it every time I look in the mirror, you know, to remind me that I'm blessed. Welcome to Montreal. This is the OP. Let's get it. We're going to get too far into this. That's something that's become a trend these days. People bitching about what they don't have instead of being grateful for what they do have. That, that's crazy to me. It's okay to want more. That, that drives you to get more, but man... Don't bitch about it because you ain't got it. Do something to get it. Uh, I was kind of like, I was a kitchen bitch at a fucking, at a, uh, can I curse? Yeah, of course. <laughs> okay. I was a kitchen bitch at a seafood restaurant, a local seafood restaurant, where uh, I did a lot of really disgusting shit, like, early in the morning. Like, at 7.30 in the morning, I would have to cut, cut up a bunch of fucking squids, like a whole bucket full of squids. It really sucked. Let me throw up a few times. For those of you who don't know, he's messing with his nose a lot because of coke. And somebody's probably going to say, oh no, he had a cold and a runny nose. Trust me, he may have had a cold and a runny nose, but that's a coke sign. I also, uh, one time the chef just came out with like a bucket of crabs, like 300 crabs, like live crabs going like this and shit. And apparently, I don't know if I'm going to get arrested for this, but apparently to kill the crabs and cook them, you need to just take a pair of scissors, big-ass cooking scissors, and just straight cut their faces off. So I, I'm a mass crab murderer. I cut the faces off of 300 crabs that day, and I never went back. Ooh. I mean, my favorite show still to this day is Scooby-Doo. I don't have a particular favorite character. The original Scooby-Doo, I just love it so much because of the, I don't know, the soundtrack, the animation and everything, the whole, I don't know. I'm into like spooky, scary shit. And when I was a kid, that was what was scary to me. You know what I mean? Scooby-Doo. How about that dude, that the submarine dude, you know what I'm talking about? With the big guy. Yeah, you got it tattooed on him. He's got a tattoo. My homie has a tattoo with the dude, with the dude from Scooby Doo. That's the villain, yeah, right there. That episode, that's wild. That, yeah, Death Note, Bleach, uh, Hunter x Hunter, um, Shiki is one of my favorite ones. A lot of people don't know about when I tell them, even though a lot, a lot, a lot of people do. But he shows. Like a lot of entertainers that I know, stand-up comedians especially, real shy in person. They don't do good on one-on-one. -on -one. They, once they're in front of the crowd and doing their thing, it's... But you can tell that he doesn't like to make eye contact. He's not comfortable talking about all this stuff. Not that there's anything wrong with it. I don't... I guess because I've heard other celebrities say that they kind of feel odd talking about themselves because it's just regular shit. But I guess... People want to know this stuff because they put them into a different category, and I guess they think they don't do regular shit. It's kind of like when you were a kid and you'd see your teacher at the grocery store, you're like, holy shit, they eat food? I think it's the same thing. 
It's the one of the less popular ones, but it's my favorite one. Uh, RPGs, you know? I played, first I started out playing RuneScape. I love RuneScape, then I did a little bit of World of War. And then, World, World of Warcraft, World of War. My bad. Just woke up, literally just woke up 10 minutes ago. And then I did uh, Oblivion, Skyrim, Elder Scrolls was my shit. Mass Effect. But mostly RPGs and like Fable, one, two, one through three. I'm like a nerd. I like magic and swords and shit like that. Watch a lot of Game of Thrones. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I played Zelda on the Game Boy, though. You know what I mean? Like the original. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm dead as fuck in a coffin. I'm long gone. <laughs> 86? God damn. I wish. Uh-uh. <laughs> Not happening. If I find someone, and if I fall in love with someone, if I have a kid, you know what I mean? Shit might change, but right now, uh, I'm out here making music, you know, and the shit I talk about is real, so I don't, you know, not much to lose right now, but I'm here, I'm doing my thing, so fuck it. How old are you now, 20? Mm-hmm. Um, what do you I'm think 20. happens after that? You know, I don't know. You could, you could just wake up again. I have no idea. I'm not, I'm not like, I know there's something because you can't kill energy, you know what I mean? Energy doesn't die. There's literally like a fucking weird thing that like leaves your brain when you die. Like a, you could see it on, on a, some cameras or some shit. You can see like a weird, like, I don't even know what the fuck to call it, but it leaves your brain and like, just like floats down into like, you know, the atmosphere and whatever the fuck. So no, definitely not. And I feel the presence of a lot of people who have passed away too. Just randomly, you know what I mean? They just pop into my head, so. Oh, of course. I think that everyone should do mushrooms in particular. Not necessarily acid, but I think everyone should do mushrooms at least two times a year. I think it's great for your mental health. It uh, teaches. Let me pause him right there. I have a lot of experience in that area. Old school acid like we did in the 80s. Mushrooms don't even compare. Yes, everybody should do that once or twice a year. Expand your mind. Really, truly search your inner soul and know who you are. So, I've heard they've messed acid up to now to where it's not really worth a shit. Not even worth to do. But back in the day, acid. Is you a lot of shit. Like, I can't explain it. It almost feels like feels like you got like a massage in your brain you know what I mean I can't I can't explain it but you just feel relieved and like oh like you, you realize a lot of shit you know what I mean it's just like I don't know I think they're they're there for a reason <laughs> you know what I have never had a bad trip I have never had a bad trip because I'm I'm just like so aware of the fact that I'm on whatever I'm on that, like there's almost like a sober me inside of the fucked up me just being like you're you're fine bro like and everyone else is freaking out around me and i'm kind of like laughing at them like i don't know it's weird i'm just good at controlling myself on that shit i used to sell mushrooms too so i would eat like way way more than you should eat every day i kind of replaced weed with mushrooms so yeah psychedelics became a regular thing to me like i did mushrooms last night yeah, we ate mushrooms last night and I stayed up all night. I slept for like two hours, I think, in the car just before this interview. So that's that's me. Shit, my favorite rappers, uh, definitely Future is on there. Gucci, Atlanta, man, fuck. Atlanta, <laughs> you know, McConaughey. Yeah, Atlanta, Atlanta did that for me. I mean, obviously there's a shit ton of New York, like, you know, artists who got bars and shit like I, the culture there is a lot different from Atlanta you know the rap culture and shit like I did listen to a lot of fucking like pro era when they were popping and I was like 14 15 or some shit like that and like shit like that and obviously the old shit bringing it back you know like we saying fuck am I doom and all the old New York shit but mostly like for some reason I find the Atlanta scene to be like almost like it reminds me a lot of rock and roll, like, in a, in a certain way, you know what I mean? I think it's amazing because I think it's, I, I mean, I think it's amazing that there's so many different, like, you know, ways to come at it nowadays because, like, 
even me, I was like, I was like, I, apparently I got a Wikipedia page. I was looking at my Wikipedia page. The genres was like alternative rock, like R and B, hip hop, trap, emo, pop punk. <laughs> so they don't really know what to call it, you know what I mean? But I think that people are just gonna have to stop putting, you know, genre, people into boxes. You know what I mean? They, they don't really need to label it anymore. Like, just enjoy the fuck out of it. And, I agree with that to an extent. Um, I've always liked all kinds of music. All, literally all. From classical to the most bizarre shit you can think of. And a lot of people trip about me doing my reactions. They're like, oh, an old dude like that is actually into this. Because I'm actually listening to the music. I enjoy music. So when you're not sitting there going... Well, I hate everything that's not rap, or I hate everything that's not metal, or I hate everything that's not country, or that's not country, or that's not... Listen to it, accept it for what it is. So he's he's spot on with that. That's a very good point. I want to take more of like a Frank Ocean rap, and like, you know what I mean? Drop projects that are just me and no one else on them, so that, you know, I did it on my own, so I can't not to like hop on a wave you know what I mean I'm not trying to ride a wave I'm trying to make my own wave a free my XP an artist of this generation I think will be legendary uh, if you put future in my generation I'd say he's gonna be like remembered forever I mean future just has so much so much music so much quality music you know what I mean and the shit he says the content of his is just absolutely insane like you know people like to turn up to it and they don't even sometimes know what they're listening to and it's just like so much you know deeper than just like turning up to that shit like I, I gets me emotionally you know? I mean shit Harley Harley's a great one um I think Chosen One is a deep song I think um Inside the Mattress Perky's Calling I love Purple Rain Purple Rain was amazing Dirty Sprite One that was what put me on and ever since then I've just been listening to every song What's the most romantic thing about them? Uh, fuck a girl in her period. <laughs> no condom. <laughs> How do you heal a broken heart? You fuck her on her period. Yeah, I had a broken heart. I got broken on my face. But, um... Shit, I have no idea I wish I knew. I just write songs about it, and it doesn't really help. So, I'll learn one day, you know what I mean? 20, still growing up. I feel it. I mean, I got hentai posters all over my fucking room, so. I brought them on tour with me, too, because we're, we're pretty much putting my bedroom on stage for the shows. It's just a bunch of hentai posters on the wall and shit. The fucking, they just know what they're doing. They know what's attractive. They know what the fuck they're doing with everything, too, from horror movies to hentai. You know, the Japanese are just absolutely, you know what I mean? They're just a, a step ahead of me. <laughs> My ultimate fetish. Hmm. I don't know. <laughs> I got a few. <laughs> but my ultimate fetish is probably I don't know I don't really have ultimate fetish but just I guess tattoos on girls is hot I fuck with tattoos on girls um, I put feet in my mouth sometimes you know what I mean I'm out here. <laughs> I mean, shit, everything changes with time. Like, you can't, you can't predict where you're going to be next year. You have no idea, you know what I mean? Like, there have been points, like, I've been in very, 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 very low points. Like, you know, shitty situations, horrible situations. And then I always, my mom always tells me that time will heal everything, you know what I mean? And 
even if it takes, even if it's like five years later and you're still feeling like, where the fuck, like when I'm waiting for this shit to heal, like it's nothing's happening. It's gonna take another, you know, few years, you know what I mean? That shit does take time in some situations, but you know, it will eventually get better. Things will get better. And also you have to be grateful for what you have. Never be ungrateful. It's when people start to be super, you know, like, oh, I hate my life, everything sucks. But it's like you got shoes in your feet right now, you know what I mean? There's kids who don't have water, access to water in the world. So pretty much, yeah. There's people fighting to survive, so. Live on for them, you know what I mean? That's a point I make to a lot of people. <clears throat> and I think I mentioned it in one of the videos last week. Suicide, you're overriding your natural instinct to survive. You look around, there are people that you would think if suicide was the answer for everything, these people would have done it. You look at the bums on the street. And I'm not talking about the fake bums that are out there fucking people out of money because they're too lazy to go work or they're supplementing their income. I do know some of those. I'm talking about real, genuine, homeless people who got into a really shitty situation instead of killing themselves and ending it they keep going through such a miserable existence having people fuck with them having people beat them up having people rape them all sorts of crazy shit because they view them as lower than humans and they can do whatever they want to to them he mentioned countries where they don't even have clean drinking water people literally starving to death but they're not giving up they keep trying to survive. So if you're having suicidal thoughts, you think that you need to just go ahead and pull the plug on this game, get some help. That's not normal. Live the life they wish they could live. Um, my message to the youth is stay aware of the shit that's happening around you and don't don't get brainwashed by by fucking you know society today because that shit is very easy to happen and don't become a police officer <laughs> hell yeah this is little pete how's my reality much love gang gang thank you man i appreciate that of course it's great I definitely dug the interview, gave me a little bit more insight into the kind of person he is, which, or was, which I'd already gathered from his music, but you can see that he was really shy and really didn't care for doing shit like that. Um, didn't seem to be comfortable talking about himself, but he said some really deep shit that really matters and it's something that you should take to heart you know I told my kids when they were growing up always 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 trust your gut if you're at a party I don't care how jumping it is if your gut tells you to leave leave if shit don't jump off okay so you missed out on a party but you're safe but what if shit does jump off especially in today's society somebody starts shooting the place up or whatever horrible thing could happen you weren't there because you trusted your gut. Always trust your gut. And like you said, don't get brainwashed. Don't let the news or government or somebody tell you how you should feel. You do you and what's right for you. I don't mean be an asshole. But, alright. This one's a little long, but so many people wanted to hear it. There it is. Do appreciate y'all hanging out, especially if you're still here. Don't forget on your way out the door to hit that subscribe button and click that bell so you know every time I release new content. You got something you want to hear? Drop it in this comment section below. It doesn't have to be music. I'll react to anything. Have a great day. 
make someone laugh if you get the chance. Don't forget to tell your friends and family each and every time you leave that you love them. Because you just never know when they'll be the last chance you get. Until next time, I am Bob Six. Peace!